Hello and happy Tuesday from this Tuesday baby at Radically Rational and RadicallyRational.com. I guess there's a reason why NBA teams trailing Love 3 have never come back to win a playoff series in now 151 attempts. It appears to be very difficult. All right, so game one of the finals coming up between the Heat and the Nuggets on Thursday. For the Nuggets, it's a question of rest versus rust in game one. We'll find out. But I'll tell you this, I'll save you some time. There are six pages in this story, and in six pages, here's how it ends. Denver wins its first ever NBA championship. Now, you could take everything I know about hockey and inscribe it on the head of a pen with room enough left over for the Gutenberg Bible. But that's going to be a hell of a final. And yes, it is final. No S. Okay? Between the Panthers and the Golden Knights. And sure, I'll watch. Those guys are studs. All right, I saw this. SMH again. This could only happen to the Raiders. And it could only involve Jimmy Garoppolo. Let me get this straight. The Raiders told Jimmy G when they signed him, that he didn't have to take a physical exam as long as he signed a waiver. Jimmy G goes, all right. Okay, so it turns out Jimmy G then needs foot surgery. And of course, at some point, he is going to have to pass a physical. But he's not there yet. And he might not be ready for training camp. Um, so if he's not ready... If the Raiders want to, they can terminate his $72 million contract? Really? And so Brian Hoyer could end up being the starter for the Raiders, at least for a while? See, this is what happens when a team owner uses a salad bowl to cut his hair. All right, decisions, decisions, the SEC not the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Southeastern Conference and their commissioner, Greg Sankey, they're going to have to decide whether going forward in football, everybody's going to play a nine-game conference schedule or an eight-game conference schedule. I vote for nine, but only because of sadistic reasons, because that means more blood, and I like that. But there are some things to consider here, and I realize this is a difficult decision because you got to talk about TV revenue, competitive fairness, bowl eligibility, and how this might impact the expanded college football playoffs. And that's why that guy gets the big bucks. All right, we already knew that we just steadfastly refuse to protect our Texas school children. But let's add this. We fail to support their teachers as well. Okay, so the state went into this soon-to-be-concluded legislative session in great shape, unprecedented great shape, because they had a record $33 billion surplus. Okay, so a perfect opportunity. We've been talking about doing this, paying all lip service. Why don't we raise teacher salaries in Texas because they are embarrassingly paltry? And this was a no-brainer. This was an easy opportunity to do it. But you know how much money we came up with for teachers? Not a dime. In the meantime, the legislature allocated $47 million to boost the staffs of people in the House and the Senate and to buy them new furniture. This is shameful. A word that increasingly describes pretty much all public policy in the Lone Star State. And this hurts me, folks, because know this, I love this state and I love this country, but we are doing embarrassing things and we are failing. And a lot of people are proud of the failure. But I will say this, at least Abbott's obscene school voucher jihad augured in until the last time he tries to pull that shit. All right, so Abbott is almost as good at damaging his own state with his grandstanding culture wars as Rhonda Santis is in Florida. Two peas in a pod. Uh, so going forward, thanks to Senate Bill 17, 
all Texas public universities will be barred, not discouraged, barred from having offices or employees for diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. Because, you know, white folks are being picked on and everything. Uh, so diversity, equity, and inclusion are now officially bad things in the Lone Star State. So I guess attracting top students is a bad thing too. And recruiting and retaining top professors and researchers is a bad thing too. And bringing modern corporations to Texas is a bad thing too. And providing a road-ready Texas workforce is a bad thing. Here I go with the head shake again. You know what this reminds me of? I know this is a politically incorrect movie, but this scene's okay. Remember the scene in Blazing Saddles where Sheriff Bart freaks out the goobers in Rock, in, uh, Rock Ridge by raising his pistol to his own temple? The state of Texas seems intent on blowing its own head off. But unlike Sheriff Bart, Abbott really is, as they said in the movie, crazy enough to do it. And then there's Kenny Boy Paxton. But not today. I'm already getting a migraine. Happy Tuesday. We're radically rational.